I'm live. Hello. Oh, hang on a second. Let's get that happening on screen. Okay, good morning. Welcome to the Grand International Craft Show number 17 for Craft Alive. I'm Natalie May and today I'm going to be doing a little card making as a little free mini class for you. Uh, we have got three days of live Facebooks and lots and lots of fantastic specials um, as part of the online event uh, this weekend. So first and foremost, nataliemay.com.au is where you need to go to find all of these fantastic specials and all of the products I'm about to show you. Um, the uh, online show is a, a fantastic opportunity for you to grab some specials, grab some bargains, do a little bit of online shopping and also learn about some of the products that I'm about to show you. So that's really, really cool. The other thing is you can also join our Facebook group, Natalie May Scrapbooking Creative Community. It is a fantastic community of people who love to share their crafty goodness. Um, they like to share their bits and pieces, um, run enter competitions, etc., etc. So perfect opportunity to do that. So as day one is the online show, we have got 15% off of paper, stamps and a washi tape. So you can get these online only. Please don't come in and shop because you will not get these specials in store. Online only. So 15% off pattern paper, all of our stamps and all of our washi tape, which is super exciting. All right, let's crack into it. So yesterday saw the delivery of new visible image. This is a fabulous company. Um, their new Christmas stamps came in and their new Christmas stamps are kind of cute actually. There's a good range here, something for everyone. So let's have a bit of a look here. We're gonna start off with the poinsettia grunge. These are 15% off. Um, hello Linda, hi Sharon, how are you? Uh, so the poinsettia grunge and it is, they're all clear stamps. So there we go, there's that one available. We also have this Christmas Robin. This one's probably one of my favorites at the moment. This is a super cute little image. It's got some lovely Christmas sentiments on it and some little grungy bits there as well. So a lovely clear stamp. Um, I'll show you this one next. This is Santa Claus. So we've got a little animated Santa Claus there. He's a little uh, builder. So you can build a wall, you can build a chimney, you've got presents, notes, bits and pieces. Super cute. Then we've got two background stamps. So these two background stamps are really, really nice as well. This one is the Distressed Christmas. So we've got some numbers and then we've got some more uh, calligraphy style grungy writing in the back there. Very, very cute. And the Grunge Christmas Words. I'm going to be using this one today uh, and then we have got the Christmas tree grunge and the shining star grunge so they are fabulous stamps are ready to go so what I thought I might do and they're 15 percent off which is a bargain I'm just going to bring my camera down a little lower if you look away if you get seasick look away now there we go but I thought I'd make some quick and easy Christmas cards using these two or three cents. I might not use that one. I might just do a Christmas tree. I'm going to pop that guy aside. Um, okay, I have limited myself here to what I can use today. I only have in front of me my Distress Oxides and I thought I'll create some simple backgrounds first using Distress Oxides. So I'm going to go in here with 
I'm going to do a few different ones here. I'm going to start with Rustic Wilderness. Good morning to everyone just tuning in. Right, Rustic Wilderness. So this is a Distress Oxide pad and what I'm going to do is use my craft mat just to do a little bit of a spritz and smoosh technique. Not over complicating it at all. So smooshing it straight onto here, giving it a spray with some water and I'm then going to just drag my edges around my piece of card just like that. So it's transferring all of that image over all of that ink over onto here. And then I'm just going to mop up the rest just like that and pop it aside to dry. So I'm pretty sure I didn't make that look too tricky, but I'm just going to do that. And now I'm going to grab my baby wipe, plain down, and start again. So this is a really simple, easy way to make multiple Christmas cards. Now, yes, I know it's July. These will probably be the only Christmas cards I make, but you know, that's okay. This colour is Shabby Shutters I'm using next, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So this is quicker than doing a, you know, blending your edges, and I do love this simple effect, so that looks really kind of cool too. Doesn't take long to dry. Wipe it off. Let's have another go, and I'll do... I might do Evergreen Bow. This is a really lovely green. So Distress Oxides, of course, are a, a cross between a water-based and a pigment ink. So activating them with water will make them do this really great little tech fun background here. And smooshing it through. And because they are a pigment ink, they have a great permanency to them too. So there we go. And I'm just going to pop that aside to dry. Three quick, easy backgrounds. Tick. Done. Right, next thing I want to do is I want to stamp some of those images that I had. So, what did I do with the stamps here? Right, so visible image, this is the Christmas tree grunge. And I'm using my stamp press to stamp my images. So stamp presses, there's plenty of different stamp presses on the market. We, uh, on nataliemay.com.au, you can purchase the Couture Creations one. This is one that I have had for many, many a year. And what I like about... Well, I'm going to do that because then I cut it out. What I like about the stamp press is it enables me to stamp a couple of times. Actually, just cut it, Natalie. Stop thinking about it. Uh, stamp a couple of times. So if you don't get it right the first time, you can go back and you can add some more ink and stamp again. Okay, so what a stamp press is going to do is stick your stamp to the top here. Now I'm going to be using a black archival ink. Now this is black soot and I'm just going to add a little drop of the reinker to it just to make sure that it's nice and juicy. Give that a moment to soak in. So if you purchase an archival ink, I highly recommend investing in a ring it re inker at the same time. So then that way you can re ink it each time you use it. All right, first time this stamp has been used, so I am not expecting to nail it the first time. Apologies about that. That was my lovely daughter ringing me for probably no apparent reason. Um, okay, so I'm just going to do that, push it down, and use my stamping knob, my little stamping knob here, to give it a nice even 
pressure. Now, because this is the first time I use it, I'm just making sure it doesn't stick. So it's actually stamped really, really well. Why have I frozen? What's going on? Kasha, can you see if my screen's frozen, please? No, there we go. We might be back. Um, and now you can see here that it hasn't stamped 100%, so I'm just going to give it another quick zhush. There we go. It's actually stamped really nicely. So I'm going to do a couple more. So let's have another go. Line up my paper, put my magnet on, ink. onto here, use the stamp press. So we have a couple of these little stamp knobs uh, available online. We have um, some ones with a bigger handle and we have these little wooden ones as well. Oh, nailed it first time. Uh, so they are excellent for your stamping, for adding um, pressure to your, to your stamps on your page on your projects. So the cardstock that I'm using, this is our A5 cardstock that I make cards out of. Uh, nothing more than that. And what I do is I cut them back, cut them in half down to six by fours. Right, I'm just going to take off some excess ink off his here. And I, while I am in a stamping sort of mode, I'm also going to stamp this little baby tree that is in this set, which is this one here. I do love these sketchy little designs. And I'm going to pop one here. Peel that off. So a stamp press is an excellent alternative to your stamp acrylic block. So then, like I said, you can line it up, re-stamp each time. And I can leave that stamp on there because, of course, I know that it's, you know, it'll line up perfectly every time. Righty o, there we go. That oh no, I think I still need to do another one. I might go there. So it's left the mark there. Just need to reapply my ink. Like that. And again, if you are making lots of Christmas cards this year, this having a stamp tool like one of these, this Couture, Couture Creations one, is very, very handy. Um, very, very helpful. Um, and yeah, great for making production line stamps. Uh, sorry, production line cards. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Robin. How are you, girls? Thanks for joining in this morning. Okie dokie. Let me just pop these back on here now before I forget. Because that's a thing. Put it on the right side. And, and I will come back to the sentiment a little bit later. Rightio. So I want to colour these images now. And to colour the images, I'm also going to use the same... Distress Oxides, um, and I'm going to just mix up a few colours. So I've got Lucky Clover here. Right, there's a good smoosh of Lucky Clover. Uh, what else have I got? I've got some pine needles. Now I could use watercolours, I could use magic balls. I could use a range of different products, but I'm, I've decided that I want to use what I have in front of me today, which is just the Distress Oxides. So now I'm going to activate those and use here in front of me. I also have 
other than the biggest mess you've ever seen. Um, the new Art by Marlene watercolour paint brushes. These are gorgeous, really nice to use, super easy. I have a water container just here, but these paint brushes have got, this is a number 18 watercolour brush, which means that it's going to hold lots of liquid. This one here is a number 12 brush and also again another one that's going to hold you know, a nice amount of liquid. I actually suspect that number 12 is probably going to be my favourite one to use. And then we've got a little detail brush here, a number 6. So what I want to do is I'm now going to take, I'm just, I'll use my big brush today. And I'm going to grab this colour here and I'm just going to get it on there. And I'm mixing a couple of colours here together. I could do that same smoosh technique if I wanted to, but I'm thinking I'm just going to keep it really, really basic and paint it on because I am going to cut it out. So it's going to be really easy. This one is the peacock feathers. I thought I'll blue things up a bit. Blue things up. Blow things up, blow things up. There we go. A bit more subtle. Okay, nice and simple. Pop that aside to dry. And then this darker one here. Okay, again, straight over the top, nice and loose, keeping it really, really simple. Good work, Louise. That was that was lovely. Live on Facebook. <laughs> All right, you're only human, babe. Don't tell, anyone. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Just our 50 or so viewers. All right, so wiping that off, popping those aside to dry. Simple. Simples. Okay, one, two, three. All right. Did I make that look difficult? I'm going with no. So now I want to pop those aside. And bring that back. That back and that back. All right. So here are my three backgrounds that I did earlier with that smoosh technique. Uh, and they have dried up really, really nicely. That looks pretty good. It's a nice dusty green. This was that peeled paint, which is more, no, it's not, that shabby shutters, which is more of a limey green. And this one was Rustic Wilderness, which I do believe is my favourite. And they've dried up quite nicely. I'm going to use this grunge Christmas words background now. And I'm going to stamp on that background. So for those of you just tuning in for the first time, Welcome, welcome. It is day one of the online show for Craft Alive. I am Natalie from Natalie May Scrapbooking and we are doing four live Facebooks a day. Uh, this is number two. We had a bit of a morning coffee and chat this morning uh, and we are going to be... I'm going to be showing you some fun and easy techniques over the next couple of days. So today as part of the online show we have got stamps and washi tape and patterned paper 15% off. All right now this one is going to be a little tight here but I'm going to go there and there. So again with my stamp press I'm lining it up, closing it, opening it up and now I'm going to stamp with a, a coloured ink. So I'm going to use Lucky Clover Distress Oxide and I'm going to completely cover that stamp. Getting it on there. Where's my knob? Here we go. Now, this one, I'm only going to stamp it once. I am not phased if it doesn't stamp beautifully because it's a grunge Christmas word stamp. So therefore, grungy's good. 
Oh yeah, and that's great. I love that. Let's bring it up to camera and I'll show you some of those details. So that's worked really, really nicely. Stamped, great. And it's a beautiful green. Number one, done. Number two, do the same thing again. And I might go in this time with clean baby wipe. Let's start with that. Now I can't remember if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna stamp with shabby shutters over this one. See what happens. Something lighter. Actually, I'm gonna use peeled paint. That might be a bit better. Or let's use both. Ooh. Right, applying two different colours onto my ink, my stamp, and then I'm using my knob, my stamping knob, to move all the way around like that. Ooh, that's worked too. A couple of different colours there, got a really nice grungy style background. Cool. All right, let's take some ink off of that. So jump online to nataliemay.com.au. All of these specials are for 15% off of stamps, 15% off of washi, and 15% off of paper is online only. So if you come into the store today, we're not gonna be able to give you a discount because our specials are online only, all right? So jump online one day only tomorrow we're going to be having a brand new special postage is only 11.95 within australia for a parcel that is under three kilograms and as of much later today you will be able to take advantage of our no judgment postage which means that you can combine your orders from the weekend so perfect opportunity to build your little stash up again right so this is evergreen bow and that's really nice too. So that's worked up quite a lot more subtle, but really, really effective. So I'm just gonna clean that off. And we are getting, gonna get into finishing these stamps off. Cards off, I should say, sorry. All right, backgrounds, tick, tick. And this one's much, much lighter. Very, very nice. Rightio. So now I want to just grunge up my edges a bit, okay? So I'm going to use my mat here, and I'm going to use, I think I'll use evergreen on this one. I'm going to use a blending tool, which is filthy dirty. But I'm just going to grunge up my edges just by using a Ranger Tim Holtz blending tool, Ranger blending tool. Just do my edges like this, just to help tie it all together. And I'm also gonna incorporate a little bit of rustic wilderness with this one. Have a green bell, rustic wilderness. There we go. Just making that a little bit more grungy. What do you reckon? Not too terrible? Susan's just commented, so easy but effective. Yeah, why should it, what, it shouldn't be tricky. It should be super simple. Finding the right stamps and finding the right colors makes a huge difference to, to your finished project as well. So what that also means is if you have got just your green inks in front of you, then it's gonna look great because all your greens are gonna work in beautifully together. But if you are bringing in uh, orange with these colours, of course, it's not going to work. In fact, it's going to look pretty ordinary because the orange is going to um, make it muddy. So stick with a few simple things in front of you. Don't overcomplicate this 
process and then you will get something that looks pretty effective and doesn't take long to do. Okay, so I have just added a bit of peeled paint. I'm only working with a few different colours here. I'm going to go back with a bit more evergreen bow if I can get that lid off. There we go. And just deepen up the edges. I don't want to go too light on the edges because then it doesn't create a frame. I want to add depth to our edges. Radio, tick, tick, done. Heaven forbid I clean up as I go, right? How am I going for time? 25 minutes. Loving it. Right, three backgrounds. One, two, three. Kasha, yeah. can you bring your trusty little phone in here for me and just take a quick photo of these, please, while I do some fussy cutting? So here's my trees from before. So I'm just going to grab my uniquely creative scissors and I'm just going to do a little bit of cutting around these edges. Thanks, Kash. Because I'm going to post some photos up and I just wanted to make sure that we're going to show everything. Radio. So now I'm just going to cut these out. And I'm just taking... Don't, don't overthink the cutting process. These scissors are really nice. If you um, have got a big man hand like me, then getting your scissors in here and they are holy moly sharp. You will find these in our tool section online at natalymay.com.au. And they're so sharp. And they're excellent for fussy cutting. Done. Get that into there. Voila. And I'm going to let those just sit aside and dry because they were the last ones I painted, so they're a little moist. One of these people when I do my fussy cutting I like to try and do all of my angles going the right way then my hand doesn't have to do as much work fussy cutting is not my favorite sport I'll leave that to our people who can you know safely put that as their superhero skill on their resume not me Carrie ann where are you? I know you're the queen of fussy cutting. Now, while I'm doing this, let me tell you about what's happening here at nataliemay.com.au, here in our super studio, our new super, super studio here in Adelaide. We are doing classes all over the place at the moment. So the lovely Kasha is doing a card class twice a month. We've just put on a second class for her. So here in Adelaide, if you are local, you can come in and join her doing a card class. So we're doing an arty card class on a Wednesday, um, a little bit more arty farty. And then there is a paper-based card class once a month on a Saturday. Um, that is a new one. That'll be starting in August, um, which is just around the corner. Now, a lot of you also know uh, this Sunday here in Adelaide, we have got the super uber talented Tracy Scott coming to teach. She's teaching for one day only in Adelaide. And to say that we are excited is a ridiculous understatement. Um, we do have a couple of spots left in the class because we now have had a couple of cancellations, last minute cancellations. But if you would like to do that and you would like to learn from the queen of Paper Artsy Stamps herself, all the information you will find online on nataliemay.com.au and you can do that and that is here in this, uh, it's about two minutes from the city is our location where we are doing the classes, um, we've hired a venue for the day, 
cannot wait. Uh, what else is happening? Vicky Booten, OMG. We love Vicky Booten here in at Natalie May Scrapbooking. Um, hey, Kasha, can you come and grab a pair of scissors and just snip some of these little baby trees for me? Thanks, because I'm sure everybody's sick of watching me do it. Um, so, yes, we've got the lovely Vicky Booten coming uh, later this year, and we're still ringing. Uh, so yes, we have a handful of seats available for Vicky Booten in in uh, coming to Australia. She will not be going anywhere else in the country. Just here in Adelaide to hang out with me and you guys, which is just like super awesome. These are oh, I've got the shaky hands this morning. I need a coffee. Maybe that's what it is. I need another coffee. Alright. Two done there. Two done there. One, two, three, four. I have a cutting assistant. Fabulous. Alright. So while the lovely Kasha is doing that, let's pop these together. So I'm going to have a look here. Yeah, Susan, I think you should move to Adelaide too, love. Um, all right, so I want to have a look here and see what stands out. I like this lighter tree on this darker card. That leaves me with this one and this one. This is very similar, so I really want to swap those over. Before I do that, though, I'm going to grab me a black pen because we've got black in our stamping, so I really do want to add a black frame all the way around. Now, if I had a trimmer handy, I might have actually trimmed these down and mounted them on a piece of black cardstock. Because you can see here that they actually look really great on this black background. So just by doing this, it's going to, um, popping this black doodle mark all the way around, because everybody loves a good doodle mark. Creating a black frame is going to help it stand out. Uh, right, so that's gonna go onto there, and maybe I'm gonna pop a few little trees in the background. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing with those trees. It was a really good idea in theory, so we'll see how we go. And this is how my process works with doing these cards, is I start to lay them all out. Add my, my elements, and before I stick down, I'll see what else needs to be added. I feel that my backgrounds need a bit more black. So I might add some black stamping to my backgrounds very quickly. And then we will stick these babies down and we will be done. Right. So the only other stamp that I have sitting here on my desk is... So that one goes with that one. That one goes with that one. Right is this grunge tones. So grunge tones is another visible image stamp and it is safe to say one of my most well used backgrounds. Um, I like to keep it super simple. I don't want it to be too strong. So I'm choosing this design here, okay? So it's not super strong but it's going to add some black to my background. Uh, ink it up, and I'm using just a clear acrylic stamp block. And I'm gonna keep it sort of down the bottom here based on where the tree is gonna go. And like that. And I might just pop a little bit at the top there. Not taking away from the background, not taking away from the trees, just keeping it there. And I'll mix this one up, do it slightly different. As you can see, I like to move my paper rather than my hand. Thank you, Kasha. You're welcome. You are employee of the day. Again. <laughs> There's still time, Louise. 
I could be runner-up. You could be runner-up. <laughs> Too funny. All right, and pop a little up there as well. Okay, so that's just made quite the difference to how... Hang on. Sorry, ink pad flat down on the carpet. All right, so quite the difference to how it looks. So let's have another quick look here. They look fantastic. I think I was going to go with, now I've messed it up, haven't I? I have to go back to this hole. Jigsaw puzzle. Okay. It's my little trees. Do I need little trees? I don't even think I need them. Now the cash. Now the cash. I'll put trees on one of them. I'm very grateful, Kasha. All right, let's do this one here. I'm using, I'm using these. Um, these are the three dollar eighty foam dots. Three dollars eighty five. And done, done, done. My staff are whispering about me in the background. Bless them. All right, there we go. Get those foam dots on there. Bit of overkill, but you know, sugar up. And I'm gonna pop that smack bang in the center. So if I had some diamantes handy or something like that, I could easily pop, I might even do some little pops of red in here in a minute. And look at that, I didn't even realize I did it. These circles here match in with these circles in here. So I'm gonna stamp some sentiments and pop those across the bottom. So if I wanted to pop in some little trees in here, in the background, I could do that, pop some in the front. Kasha wanted to know if you needed a star on top of you. Oh, thank you. On Where's the colander? The colander is, you know, everybody's favorite useful piece of Minte ephemera. You can... Instead of a star, you can have a cup. We could have a cup. We quite often have a little bit of a giggle here about the slightly bizarre things that you find in a cutout sheet. So whether it be Minte or AB Studios or one of the other wonderful brands of pattern paper, quite often on an ephemera sheet or a cutout sheet, you'll see something like perhaps some scales or a jug. Won't be using, or a colander as the case may be. So, a, a what, sorry? A tree ornament. It's a little big for a set of scales or a little large for a tree ornament. But, you know, let's let's go with it. All right, I'm going to pop that there in the middle. So using foam dots means that they have that dimension. They are lifted off the background. They are creating a little bit of a shadow underneath as well. Right, done. Tracy, uh, I'm just commenting. Oh, hello, Karen. Oh, look, I'm reading. I can't read all your comments because I'm focusing. Sorry, girls. Okay, and we're going to pop that down there. Right, so just using Distress Oxides. Let's, let's slide the scales and the colander out of the way. Sorry, girls, I'm not going to be using them today. I'll put them on your personal Christmas cards, shall I? Yes. Um, okay, there we go. Distress Oxide Smooshed Background. Uh, stamping over the top with the visible image Christmas Grunge Words. Then our Christmas Tree Christmas Tree Grunge Stamped Image here uh, in the background. That looks fantastic. Uh, in the foreground, sorry. And smooshed as well. Some stamping over the top. So what I'll do off camera before I post a photo, photo of these is I will add some Christmas sentiments to it. Do I have any Christmas sentiments handy? Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, Christmas tree, star, shine bright. Wasn't there Christmas wordy somewhere? Hey, they just arrived. Right, you know what I'm going to do? Do you reckon there was, Kasha? 
There was some in the box, in the bag. Right, I'm just going to go with... Don't be opening a new stamp. Why don't you get me some to show the girls and I will... So I'm just going to stamp Oh Christmas Tree with my acrylic block and I'll do it in black. Pop that in a safe place. Acrylic block. Bit of card. What you got? Oh, all right. This would be perfect. But Louise said no. But Louise said no. I'm not allowed to open another one. So the Christmas wishes, this one would be absolutely splendid. I love that and it matches this background perfectly. So I think this would be my, my preferable choice. So plan B is this one here. So I'm using the stamp that comes with the Christmas tree grunge set and I'm just going to pop it on. Oh, almost nailed it. A little bit of fingerprint in the background there. Should be right. Look, you can't even see my fingerprint smudge now, can you? Ta-da! Actually, I'm going to do one more. Just for luck. Okie dokie. At this point, finding a paper trimmer would be preferable. Plan B, use some scissors and trust your eye. And if you are making someone a handmade Christmas card and they comment on something being crooked, you don't need those people in your life. That's my theory. Agreed? All right, so. Snip that. Banner, 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 banner. My trick for doing a little banner for your words is I do a little snip here, snip in the middle, take it there, take it there. Very crooked. I'll give that one to Louise and add the colander. Snip. What happened to our communal Christmas card? Did one of my family let the team down, Louise? Didn't we have one? Yeah, I think that was Jess. I think Jessica let the team down. We had a Christmas card that we passed on to the people every year. You know, the communal Christmas card. Had a little embellishment. Add a little embellishing, a couple of little sneaky stickers on the side. I'll have to ask Jessica, or was it a tag? Oh, it was a birthday card and a Christmas tag. Oh, it, was a, it was a Christmas tag out of a cracker. It was a Christmas cracker tag. I kept for a year. You kept for a year and saved it for us. Because, you know, that's what family do. Right, snippy, 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 and then I'm just going to ink the edges in this very, very quickly and zhuzh it up a bit. Missed the beginning of this. Hello, Sharon. Yeah, so Sharon just put up a good point. Might be able to watch this again later. Absolutely. You always have the advantage with these little free classes that you can jump over to my YouTube channel. Uh, look me up, Natalie May Scrapbooking. Natalie May Scrapbook Ideas, and we can uh, we will be adding it to our YouTube channel. I'll probably do it tonight when I get home, truth be told, and then you can watch it back again and again. You can also go back and watch it on Facebook. I'm going to grab some thicker foam tape. 
uh, this time because I want my sentiment to stand up a little higher. So I was just reaching behind me then. Sorry about that. Done and done. Popping that on there. So just to recap, we have created a quick and simple little Christmas card here using Distress Oxide, using Visible Image Stamps and adding some simple layering techniques of our ink and our stamping. So going back to some basic things that we already know that we just don't use enough. Um, and creating something that looks fantastic using a couple of different colors of distress oxides and keeping it really really easy so I'm going to take some photos of these in a moment and post them online with a link to the items if they haven't already sold out um, jump online to nataliemay.com.au and today you can get 15% off of paper stamps and washi tape and this special is online only. So you can only grab that online at nataliemay.com.au. We have got a fantastic Facebook community that we would love for you to join. And you can follow me on Instagram here and our brand ambassadors as well. So there we go. Three lovely, super simple cards. Excellent for making production line Christmy, Christy cards. All right, guys, I look forward to seeing you back here at 1.30 for another quick and easy live Facebook. Until then, chat to you soon. Bye.